YouTuber Jake Paul fighting three-time NBA slam dunk champion Nate Robinson. Watch me November 28th, knock out Nate Robinson live on pay-per-view. Mike Tyson and the one and only Roy Jones Jr. do battle for the very first time on November 28th. If you told my 10-year-old self yeah, I'd be fighting on a Mike Tyson carb, I'd be like, no way. I'm gonna take his head off. Really? Have to. And definitely left left. left. <laughs> Thank you. Hey Robinson. Yeah. You said you're tired of these influencers. I'm not going for the bullshit. Like, please. I don't think he stands a chance. Let's go, Nate. Hey, Nate finna beat this boy ass, and I'm finna enjoy every moment of it. <laughs> Yo, Nate, what's up, bro? You wanna come train with us, bro? Good job, Nate. Shut up, bitch. I just wanna prove that, you know, I'm the greatest athlete, one of the greatest athletes to ever walk this earth. Uh. Everyone thought that Nate Robinson was going to beat me. I was the most betted against person that night. All these people, they didn't think I'm a real fighter. And so that's the beauty of it, is when a bunch of people think you're going to lose and like proving them wrong. Nate Robinson is a former teammate of yours. He tweeted out, I'm going to shock the world. And then after his knockout, you responded to that tweet and you're like, yeah, I see no lies, man. Yeah. Boxing was pretty much a dying sport. 25 million views, boxing's going back. I know my ability. I'm just going to prove it to the world. I'm the one. Welcome to the show. Bitch, I'm a fucking chappy. I love entertaining just in any way possible, but the thing that's sticking out to me the most right now is fighting. After a good sparring session, I'm happy for the rest of the day. I love being athletic and competing. My passion is not waking up every day to film YouTube videos. Someone asked me on an interview, what's harder, YouTube or boxing? And I said, YouTube. It's time to make this snow slide. <laughs> How did you know this was what I wanted to do? Me and my brother started out making videos, just recording whatever we were doing when we were 10 years old and he was 12 years old. What we have here today is a blowhorn. We are going to test it out right now. It's pretty loud. Go ahead. Can I have an order of some? With, uh... I'm sorry, what's that? An order of some. And so we naturally just, like, we got good at recording stuff. And my dad was always, like, super funny, so... His like sense of humor kind of got passed down to us. After we got a camera, we just started recording it, and then six months later, we found out about YouTube. Hey! <laughs> Two years later, we found ourselves doing the same thing on Vine. It kind of all started with one video, and we both grew like 5,000 followers. I forgot the moment. Oh, no! Oh! <laughs> That's a close one. And that's when it kind of just all started taking off. And you started getting millions of views. I think it's at like 2 million views per day to 2.5 Per video. Maybe. Yeah. It's crazy, man. And it just kept on growing and growing. And when I sort of started to become successful, and a lot of people were hating on that in my school. They would say I was cringe. They would say my videos suck. Sitting in school and making more money from Vine than this teacher sitting in her class. Eventually, I just told my parents, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I can't go to school. This just doesn't make sense. I need to move to Los Angeles. I want to pursue this career. I want this to be something that I do for the rest of my life. When he said he wanted to go out to L.A., I didn't want him to do it. When he told me that, he had literally six months until he turned 18, and he was going to go anyway. So I figured, well, Logan's going. I might as well send them together. And I was scared. I did want Jake to finish high school, and... He promised me he would, and he enrolled in a private school online. He literally had to write some papers and get through it. It was accomplished. But I hate it when you say he dropped out, even I though dropped he did. Out. I didn't even um, write those essays. Well, you did. You wrote them. I rewrote them. When Jake was in high school, I really thought he would go into the military or be a football coach, go to college for sure, but didn't love academics whatsoever. He liked to have fun, loved his friends, was very loyal to his friends, loved his sports, 
Was the class clown, got in trouble a lot at school. The sneeze. People love you. 14 million subscribers to your to you on YouTube. I mean, really, really inc incredible to have that many people who are very interested in what you do. You're probably the fastest growing influencer in the world right now. Yo, you guys Jake Pollard? They all have merch. We have to be on time to this book time. Like, you can't make the fans wait. officially killing off Vine, the video service that they began back in 2013. Jake, I've got to ask you about Vine. It's on its like dwindling edges, but it's just about translating your content onto other platforms. So now like Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat are super popular. And so I just create content on those platforms and grow an audience there. When my teachers were laughing at me for having these dreams and aspirations or Kids at my school would talk shit about the videos that I made, and they would say, oh, when you go to Los Angeles, you're gonna come back in three months because you're gonna be a failure. That's always been my motivation, is like proving people wrong. And when I say something that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it. Kid's pretty smart. With Vine going under, he's like, it ain't happening again. I'm just gonna be huge on everything. And then I landed an audition with Disney Channel and boom, go in, test for the role. Less than a month later, they called me, they're like, hey, we wanna hire you to be on Disney Channel. Thanks for watching, Dareheads. See you next time. And that was one of the craziest phone calls I've ever got. That was when I was like, damn, <laughs> I made it. I never thought I would say this, but welcome home, Jake Paulers. <laughs> this is how we know, like we, we did it. Game 10 is out here, boy. The house is so damn big that you literally have to call people. Yo. 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 House so big, I need walkie-talkies just to call my home. Guys, check out the view, baby. This is lit, and you bet your ass I'm building a zip line directly into the pool. Check it. I created the first social media label and the first influencer house. It was called Team 10. Team 10? Team 10 is a family. I look at this as like literally a TV show. Yeah. Y'all can't handle this. The business model was spot someone with potential and talent sign them to my social media label, market them, teach them how to make YouTube videos, teach them how to use Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and use my following to promote them. Take a percentage of them. Piñata, human piñata. Piñata, no piñata. No. Oh, is this Spain? No, no, shut the up. Good morning, Martinez. Erica made a YouTube channel in one day, gets 200,000 subscribers. Jake, thank you so much. I didn't like the whole Team 10 house and how out of control that was getting. Back in July, KTLA sent a crew to investigate reports that Jake and his YouTuber housemates were making a nuisance of themselves, lighting fires in a drained swimming pool, and drawing crowds of fans outside their $18,000 per month rented home. He's funny, savage. <laughs> Savage? Yeah. It's a really nice, quiet street, and now we're just this, like, war zone. Neighbors hate me. You're essentially creating this machine that just keeps on getting bigger and bigger, and it just needs more gas. But as it gets bigger and bigger, more parts start to break off. Everyone in this room is delirious. There's all this madness, and you wake up, and you're in the press, and every little thing you do is under a microscope. You're reading hate comments. He is a sociopath. He's a liar. Just being 23, such a developmental age where you're figuring out yourself, you're figuring out what your purpose is and having to do that under a microscope is really difficult. And I would say a lot of people, probably more than ever, don't like me. He dragged me down the stairs. He was laughing the whole time, I was crying. They painted a mural of my face on my wall. It was spray painted, get the fuck out of our house. Okay, Jake, you're a bully. You. I'm one of the most misunderstood creators and artists and business people that's out there. I was trying so hard to grow talent and there was some successes here and there, but it just turned out that all of these people that I was helping amassed millions of followers and then all of a sudden they're cocky, ego. So I finally made a decision to just only work with really great people. I've lived here for two years, and it's gone through so many different versions of house, but what's my favorite it's ever been now? 
This is my Tesla Model X P100D, zero to 60 in like 2.9 seconds. Got the Falcon doors wrapped in satin black. I got all of like my fans' names here, just to like show love. This goes like 100 miles per hour. didn't have a lot growing up, so when I started to get a lot, that's part of the, the addiction. You're like, wow, I've never experienced all this greatness. I'm not gonna slow down or stop for anyone. YouTube is a drug, and that's what a lot of people don't talk about. When you get more views, you make more money. But what stupid shit do you have to be doing to get attention and just maintain that level of views because you just want to keep on growing and growing and growing. And you see your bank account getting bigger and bigger. Everything okay? Yeah, I'm filming a vlog and I'm trying to stay overnight in the White House. Got into some interesting kind of trouble there, right? Did the FBI show up your house or something? Or Yeah, the Secret Service. This is this amazing. It looks like Waco. This is a massive raid. We did see the sheriff's department come out of the house with a lot of weapons. When you know you didn't do anything and you're still in the press, I look at it as free marketing. You just are lost in this world, but you have to keep going because there's pressure and there's millions of people watching. You just are getting sucked in every direction to the point where like, you don't even know who the fuck you are. Tonight, there is nothing united in many states of America. Through the night, protesters smashed into luxury stores, stealing items and clashing with police. Look at him, pointing guns at me. Look at, look at, look at. Jake Paul says he and his team did not participate in looting and vandalism at an Arizona mall. I was at a restaurant, had my camera. We walk outside the restaurant, we see helicopters, people protesting, breaking shit. I start to record, I was just blown away by what was happening. And then people are like, oh, he's looting, he was stealing shit from the mall. The Scottsdale police just want to make an example out of me, and so they're of course gonna press charges for criminal trespassing. I could definitely actually go to jail for it. All of them are over there hanging out. No social distancing, no masks. The videos outraging the city's mayor. I really could not believe that an event like this was taking place. We expect everyone in our community to act responsibly. We just cannot show such disregard. It goes along with being super hated. I'm 10 different celebrities or influencers. Most favorited tweet has to do with like talking shit about me. All of these controversies, time cleared them for me. The truth eventually came out with all of these different things. This is the old me. It's the end of an era, a start of a new one. I'm a legitimate pro fighter. I just feel like I finally like found what I was put on earth to do. I left all the LA, Hollywood, Jake Paul shit behind. I had to close the chapter on that book, and this is that new era. Bitch, I'm a fucking champion. Everything's at stake. My back is up against the wall, 100%. It has been in every single fight. That's what makes me great. Three years ago, these YouTubers wanted to fight me and my brother. We fought them, Manchester, England, 25,000 people sold out, a million people watching online. From that moment, I just knew like, damn, this is one of the biggest, dopest things that I've ever done. And this is a serious business. That's really where it all started. And so I want to bring these big name MMA fighters into the boxing room. With boxing, the sky's the limit. I think the potential of what we can make with doing this in the next couple of years is massive. It can become something huge. We're making hundreds of millions of dollars. Bitch, I'm a fucking